another day here in the fish room. Luckily for me, there's not too much maintenance or work to do today. So I get to focus on some fun things that I really enjoy doing. Uh, we're gonna be changing up some breeding projects, uh, starting some, uh, so let's get started. We're finally gonna start breeding some Celestial Pearl Danios. These guys went through a three week deworming process and I'm pretty sure they're all cleaned out now. Put some food out to make some of them come out. Doesn't look like it, but there's probably 20 in this 10 gallon. What I'm gonna do is put some Java Moss up front so they could spawn in it. And I'll take that Java Moss out after a couple days and hatch those eggs. With these guys, I actually use a container to hold the java moss so that when they spawn over it, all the eggs are scattered and any that fall through will actually be caught in the cup. This is just a beta cup from a pet store. I've used food containers before, haven't uh, had any issues with them. As long as you can take the container and pull the whole cup out with the water and java moss in it, um, it should work fine for you. And we'll check back in on these guys when they're comfortable. Right now they're a little spooked. Um, probably in the next day or two, we'll get some footage of them spawning. I think it's time to take the parents of these long fin white clouds out of this tank. They've only been here for, you know, just about a week. And today I just noticed uh, on the surface in the back, some fry, oh, actually one's swimming right across the screen there, a couple. So. Clearly they've laid eggs and they're already hatching. So I'm gonna to have to pull the parents out and let the rest hatch out uh, so they don't get eaten. Here's a look at the long fin white cloud minnow fry. Got a bunch free swimming now, the parents out. And we've got some more stuck to the glass. So, and probably some that still need to hatch that were in this java moss. But it looks like we've got a good number of them. I'm excited to get these guys going again. You can see how small they are. I feed them uh, Ceramicron and Hikari first bites the first couple days. And I start throwing some live baby brine when they can start eating it. I'm gonna be adding a hang on breeder box to this tank with the panda guppies in it. It's got a lot of big females in here that I'm sure would eat any fry that are born. And I think now's a good time because that female in the back there, she's looks like she's about to, to drop any day now. And she's a good looking female. She would come up, there she goes. Um, she's got a, light, a nice top dorsal fin. She's got a darker body than some of the other females. And you can see the gravity spot there. She looks like she's about to drop any day now. So I wanna make sure that her fry survive. She's a good looking female. You know, it looks like she was bit on the top part there. That's, uh, that's fine, that's not a genetic thing. Um, but that's something that has healed and she's doing really great now. So we're gonna put her in the breeder box. Getting this one set up here, just to show you guys how it works. So it's run by air. You get an um, airline hooked up and that pushes the water um, right into the box there. And then once this is filled, it'll overflow on the other side. This one happens to be the knockoff one. Uh, you could use the Marina one, I have both. Uh, they just happen to not have them in stock, but they're both available on Amazon. Uh, both are, they're really similar. Uh, I don't have a problem with either one. I don't like one better than the other. I've used this breeder box for a lot of different fish, uh, guppies, angelfish, rice fish. What's nice about it is it comes with a valve that you can adjust the airflow, depending on what you have in there. So if I have something uh, really fragile, newborn, angelfish fry. I'll do the, the current really slow. And then as they get older, you can, um, you know, really crank it and you won't really hear that because the water line will be filled. What I usually do, you can see the overflow here has that barrier and it works all right. Um, I usually put a piece of sponge from an AquaClear filter that I just ripped off and that prevents any fry from overflowing. Usually it's the angelfish that will overflow. Sometimes guppies will, but I use it for all the setups just to, to make sure that there aren't any fry falling over and getting eaten. Added some plants in there. We've got water sprite and some floating frog bit there. The female's in there. She's kind of freaked out right now, but they usually get comfortable 
but they're only in here for a couple days, so uh, they're all right. You wanna make sure when you're using this that you have the lid on it because guppies will try to jump out of it. They see their friends over here and they try to make a jump and they miss. So make sure you put the lid on. That female probably be in here a day or two, if I had to guess. And you wanna make sure that whatever cover you have, whether it's fake plants, mops, or live plants, that um, you have cover both on the surface and on the bottom. And that's blocking the line of sight because I have other strains that love to eat their fry and you need a lot of cover in the breeder box. Um, otherwise, you know, you go to work in the morning and you come back home and in that time she had her fry, but there, you know, you could see that she's thinned out clearly, but she probably ate them all while you're at work. So uh, the more cover we have, the more she's fed, the better the odds for the fry to make it. Here's a tank with the Japan Blue Gold Double Swords that's got a more seasoned setup that's been, you know, this has been set up for a couple months now. And you can see all the fry in there from the most recent drop. I think it, normally I would leave them an extra week in there, but we've got a female in here, that one right in the center, that is giant. And I'm pretty sure that she'll drop maybe tonight even. So these guys are really well fed. The fry are two, three weeks old. I'm pretty sure that they're big enough to not get eaten. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap the fry out and capture that big female and put her in there. Here's some cherry shrimp being weird in this tank. I took the lid off to capture the female and they're on the surface. The jungle vowel is, uh, you know, on the surface here, it's grown really tall. I don't know why they're half out of water, half in. I guess they're eating some leftover fish food, but see, they just came out of the water. Uh, kind of weird, never seen that before, but you know, they're happy, they're thriving in this tank and the guppies definitely can't bother them, bother them up there. So. Since this video is focused on breeding, I figured I'd just show something I found in the orange shrimp tank. We have our first little baby shrimplets feeding on the algae on the side of the glass there. Which is super exciting. I've only had these guys for about a month and they've acclimated well, much better than the blue velvets and already have little shrimplets swimming around. Doesn't look like it, but there's 50 adults in this tank right now. And now that I know that they're acclimated to my water and doing well and eating well, I'll probably have to redistribute some into different tanks and really crank these guys out because they are a beautiful color. It's the next morning and we already have fry in the panda guppy breeder box. You can see how small these guys are. Definitely get eaten right away. I found maybe like six in this tank. And if I didn't have the sponge over there blocking the overflow, I would think that uh, some of the fry actually just went over, but there's no way any fry got past there. So looks like another female may have dropped in this tank uh, at the same time, you know, it, it's unlikely, but it's possible. And I found six in there. And in here in the breeder box, we have at least 30, 40 of them in here. So you could see the difference in how many more fry you get when you have it protected in the breeder box versus in the tank with all these hungry mouths. I figured I'd show the Luke Roebuck red guppies that I just found some fry in the quarantine tank. Super exciting. Just got these guys and I've been wanting these for a long time and to have fry already in quarantine is amazing. That was another day in the fish room. I had a lot of fun. It's always nice to see new fry in the fish room. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.